Hi, my name is Jessica Sharon Brock, and today I will be demonstrating on how to take vitals for the horse. Um, here I have my horse who will be assisting me today, Chesney, and then I also have a handler, Jessica, who will also be helping take vitals today. Um, it's important to have a handler with you while taking vitals just so you have two eyes on the horse to make sure that they're comfortable, um, that they're not about to do something stupid or silly to hurt you or themselves. Um, the overall general uh, health of your horse is important to keep in mind um, in summary of vital signs because you should know what is normal and what is abnormal for your horse. Um, you should keep in mind your horse's posture, your horse's movement, skin coat condition, appetite, just his normal routine and personality and attitude. Uh, it plays an important part in the overall health of your horse. Um, so know your normals for each horse. Um, your horse's feces and urine also have a normal and abnormal. Your horse's feces should be brown, soft, um, moist, um, looks like pebbles coming out. Um, your urine should be yellow and not a darker color. Darker color could um, implicate that something's wrong with your horse. So that's another thing to keep in mind while you are checking the overall general health of your horse. Um, your horse should be perky, um, attentive, bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, happy to be alive, should be interested in food, um, and just overall have a sunny, bright expression and appearance. Vital signs that we'll be taking today, I'll start from the head and work my way down to the tail. First, we're going to start off with the mucous membranes. We're going to then move to the capillary refill. Then we're going to move to a skin pinch test. We will then take a heart rate. We will be taking a pulse. And we also will be taking a respiratory rate. And we will also be taking their temperature. So to start off, I'm going to take my horse's, I'm gonna test my horse's mucous membranes. Those should be always be a pink and moist in color. Um, my mucous membranes are a good indication of your horse's health. Um, colors that you wouldn't wanna see in a mucous membrane are yellow, which could indicate a liver problem. Blue could indicate a lack of oxygen. Red could indicate um, an infection or a fever. And a white palish color could indicate anemia. So in order to check my horse's mucous membranes, I'm gonna ask my handler to be aware of the horse and her surroundings, make sure that my horse's attitude is okay, to make sure that she's safe, the horse is safe, and that I'm safe during all of this. So again, the mucous membrane should be pink and moist at all times. And in order to check that, I'm just gonna come up to my horse's muzzle. I'm gonna let her know I'm here, make sure she's all right with this. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna flip her lip up, like so. And those are pink and moist. And I can feel also that they're moist. So I would have to say that her mucous membranes are normal compared to what she should be at. Um, as long as I'm talking about mucous membranes, I can talk about uh, the capillary refill time and a place that you could do that is on inside of the gum in the horse's mouth as well. So again, same kind of factor. I'm gonna let my horse know I'm here. Just knows that she's doing all right. Hi, Chesney. Pet her in the mouth. And all I'm gonna do is flip the slip up and I'm gonna press my thumb for one to two seconds and it should go back for within one to two seconds. It's gonna turn white when you press on it initially for one to two seconds. When I release, it should refill and go back to that pink moist color one to two seconds. Additionally, what I didn't mention uh, with the mucous membranes, um, also what places that you can check are the inside of the eye and the vulva of the horse. Next, I'm going to move on to the skin pinch um, for the horse vital sign. Um, skin pinch test indicates um, hydration of the horse. Um, some special considerations to keep in mind with the skin pinch test are uh, the age and just the overall condition of your horse. An older horse might have a harder time having the skin go back down for the test. That's normal. But again, it's important to know what is normal for your horse to keep in mind. So for the skin pinch test, I'm gonna let my horse know I'm here. Jess knows she's here. Trust me, I'm here. And ideally, the good place to do that is right before the shoulder, here in the neck. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna gently take some skin. I'm gonna pinch it, tent it up for one to two seconds, and let go. So again, I'm just going to pinch it, raise it up for one to two seconds, let go, and 
it went back to the normal position within one to two seconds. So I'd have to say that my horse is hydrated adequately. The next vital sign that we'll be taking on Chesney are, uh, is her pulse. Um, three places that you could ideally check her pulse are the maxillary artery underneath her jaw. You could be checking her pulse at her radial artery, which is on the inside of her knee. And you also could check it on her digital pulse, which is on the inside of the fetlock, which I'll demonstrate here in a little bit. So in order to take a pulse rate on a horse, first I'm going to make sure that somebody has a timer or I would have a watch, but today Jess is going to time for me. I'm going to ask her to time me for about 15 seconds. Um, 15 seconds, my reading, I should have a reading within 15 seconds. And then I'll multiply that by four to get a reading per minute. Um, it's important to do this for a shorter amount of time because sometimes horses like to move and get jittery and impatient while you're taking the pulse. So a shorter amount of time will give you a bit more accurate reading for the pulse rate. So for the pulse rate, I'm going to choose to take it on the maxillary artery, which is on the inside of the jaw. Um, pulse rate should fall between 32 to 44 beats per minute. So again, I'm going to... Uh, start by doing this and I'm going to ask my timer to start when I find a pulse rate on my two inside fingers on the inside of the jaw. Once I find a rate, I'm going to ask my timer to start. That way we can have something accurate. So I'm going to feel around. There should be a little vein on the inside of her jaw. Chesney's is pretty prominent. It should feel like a big old earthworm on the inside of the jaw. And once I feel it, I'm just going to lightly apply pressure. Not too hard, not too less, so I can feel that faint uh, rhythm in that vein. So I have found it, so I'll tell you when to start. Go ahead. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Time. So I had nine beats, or I felt nine pulses within a 15 second time span. So nine beats times four is 36 beats per minute and that falls within the 32 to 44 beats per minute for the pulse. So I would say that my horse is in a normal time zone or in a normal pulse rate for the pulse. So again, three places that you can take the pulse are in the maxillary artery underneath the jaw, the inside of the knee, which would be the radial pulse, and then you could also take a digital pulse. Um, again, I'm going to let my horse know I'm here. I'm going to demonstrate where you would find a digital pulse, but really you should only feel an, a digital pulse if your horse is having a leg or foot complication, um, usually with lameness or founder or anything else involving the leg or the hook. So I'm going to let my horse know I'm here, and I'm going to bend down. My handler is making sure my horse is all right. And the digital pulse falls on the inside of the fetlock. And I'm going to use my two fingers to feel that there. And sometimes in some horses you are able to feel it very faintly, but not generally unless they're having a problem. So the next vital I'm going to take is kind of in coordinates with the pulse. So I'm going to take the heart rate. Again, the heart rate should fall between 32 to 44 beats per minute. Um, some factors to keep in mind with the pulse and the heart rate, um, those can be altered with exercise, hot weather, um, anything of that sort. So that's something to keep in mind when you take the heart rate and pulse and keep in mind when you're taking it. If you're taking it right after your horse comes in from turnout or in exercise or in hot weather, that's something to keep in mind that it might have been altered. Chesney, however, has not done any of those, so hopefully we will find a normal uh, heart rate. So a tool that you're going to need for this is a stethoscope, and I have provided one here from our lovely keeper cabinet. Um, this will help me find the heart rate. So again, before I start, I'm making sure my handler is aware of my horse. I'm aware of my horse. I'm letting her know I'm here. I'm going to keep an eye on facing this way to keep an eye on her ears and her facial expressions just in case I need to back off and get away for any reason. So it's going to take me a little bit to find it and that's okay. I'm going to move it around in, in accordance to where um, the heart rate is going to be. I'm going to ask my handler also to time for 15 seconds just as she did for the pulse. 
15 seconds times four is going to give me a minute reading. So whatever number falls in that 15 second period, I'm gonna multiply by four to get my reading. So I'm gonna start. I'm gonna let my handler know when to start the timer once I found the heart rate. I'm on beat four right now. Time. I counted eight beats per minute. Um, I didn't want to count out loud because I did have a harder time hearing that and that was so faint that would have distracted me from my counting. But I did find eight beats per minute a little different than the pulse rate. So eight beats times four is 32 and that falls within the 32 to 44 beats per minute. Um, if you have difficulty uh, hearing the heart rate, a little trick that I found to be a little helpful is sometimes I can feel a little vibration in my ear, um, but this time I was lucky enough to actually hear the heart rate, and with more time and practice, it'll become like it's eating a piece of cake. It should be good piece of cake. The next vitals that I will be pulling on Chesney are her respiratory rates. Um, and, and normal, I'm sorry, a normal respiratory rate should fall between 18 to 16 breaths per minute. Um, some things to keep in mind, just as I had mentioned with the pulse and the heart rate, things that can affect a respiratory rate are exercise, whether um, if your horse is coming in for turnouts, stuff like that. Um, something that you would not want to find on a horse is an inverted respiratory rate, and that's when the horse is breathing faster than its heart is pumping. And that indicates a severe problem that you should probably consult with a vet with. So in order to check respiratory rate, you could check, you could use the nostrils, but horses are often sniffing and using their nose in different ways. So a more accurate reading would be to watch her flanks rise and fall. So in order to do that, I'm going to stand right here. I'm making sure my handler is aware of my horse. I'm aware of my horse. Um, I, once I find a comfortable respiratory rate, I'm going to ask my handler to time for 15 seconds. Again, 15 times 4 would give me a minute reading, and whatever I count in that 15 seconds, I'm going to multiply by 4. Whenever you're ready, Jessica, you can go ahead. Start. Yep. One. Two. Three. Four. I had four. Four breaths times four is sixteen, and that falls with the in between the time or the the number of eight to sixteen breaths per minute. Um, next, I'm going to check Chesney's gut sounds. I'm going to check her gut sounds in four different quadrants. The four different quadrants I'm talking about are on both sides of the horse. I'm going to check her upper quadrant which would be up in this area here before the play. And then I'm also going to check her lower quadrant on the left side. And then I'm also going to repeat that on the right side of the horse, which I will demonstrate both sides today. In order to check gut sounds, I don't need a timer. I'm just going to be listen, listening for a constant rumbling sound. Um, we want an active gut, but we don't want an overactive gut, as that can implicate problems as well. Um, something else that I don't want to hear I, I don't want to not hear sounds. I always want to hear something in each quadrant. If I don't hear something in a quadrant, that could indicate colic or other complications within the horse. So before I check gut sounds, I want to make sure my handler is aware of my horse. I'm making sure Tresney's all right. I want to keep an eye on her ears because I am moving and pressing my head against her body. So I'm letting Tresney know I'm here. And the first quadrant I want to check is the upper left quadrant. So I'm going to Place my hand gently over her, and I'm just going to press my ear gently against her, and I'm watching her the entire time. And if I can't really hear anything, I might shift my ear a little bit to hear differently. 
And that upper left quadrant was active and gurgly and that sounded good and healthy. Next, I'm gonna check the lower quadrant. I'm gonna be a little more careful as I move down here because this is closer to her hind end and underneath, which might be sensitive to the horse. So again, letting my horse arm here and watching her. I'm gonna press my ear down here. And again, just pretty much similar to the upper left quadrant, uh, Chesney's lower left quadrant was gurgly, it was active, I could hear rumbling, and that's a good indication that her guts are all right. I'm going to move to the other side now and check the other quadrants. And again, I'm always making sure that my horse's body language is okay, that she's all right with what I'm doing. It's important to do this throughout all vital signs because if your horse is having a problem, they could be very uncomfortable. So I want to make sure that I'm making this easy. So I'm going to let my hand over here. And first I'm going to check her upper right quadrant for gut sounds. And the entire time I'm watching her, her ears and her facial expression. And that upper right quadrant sounded pretty good. It was gurgly, it was rumbly, it was active. So I would have to say that's a healthy upper right quadrant of the horse. And now I'm gonna to move to the lower right quadrant. And again, making sure my horse is okay, watching her body language. was more prominent than all of them. That was very loud, very gurgly, um, very active. Um, I would say that's pretty good. All four quadrants had noises and rumbling in them. So I would say that her gut sounds are pretty normal. The last and final vital sign that I'm going to take, and probably one of the more important of all of them, although they all are important, is the temperature of the horse. The temperature of the horse should fall between 99.5 degrees to 101.5. Again, some factors that could play into an alteration in this temperature are exercise, heat, um, possible health problems, anything of that sort. Um, but we're gonna see what Chesney's temperature is today and hopefully that's a normal range. I'm going to want to have prior to checking the temperature are some, is some petroleum jelly to lubricate the thermometers in which I'll be using. I also have a rag for once that I am done taking the temperature I'll wipe my thermometers off with. Um, two different types of thermometers that you could use are a digital thermometer which I prefer to use and I will be demonstrating today. Um, in addition to the digital thermometer you can use a mercury thermometer and that's kind of an older school way. Um, but this is the mercury thermometer and you'd be reading that through this glass. Um, this mercury thermometer has a rope attached to the end of it. So when you take the temperature that it doesn't get sucked into the rectum of the horse. It also has a clip in case you decide that you wanna clip it to the tail um, while you use it. That way we just don't lose a thermometer in the horse. And again, I'll be using the digital thermometer today. So before I even go back there to take the temperature, I'm gonna prepare my thermometer. Um, when I do this, I'm not gonna dip my thermometer straight in the petroleum jelly just because I don't wanna spread any contaminants or germs because we do use this petroleum je jelly within a larger population of horses. So I wanna be sanitary about it. So instead I'm gonna use my finger. And you don't want too much or too little of the petroleum jelly, you just want enough to coat the tip of the thermometer so that it slides nicely into the rectum it doesn't cause too much pain for the horse so i'm going to grab a gob i have enough on my finger to coat and any that i don't use i have my rag that i can wipe on so i'm just going to put a thin layer of petroleum jelly on the base of the therm or the end of the thermometer once i do that i'll wipe the end of my finger off with my rag and it's ready for me 
This thermometer um, is automatic. It should beep once it is, once it has a reading. Um, so before I even insert it, I'm gonna turn it on with this button right here. And it should clear out to L. That means it's ready to use. Um, before I move back to my horse, I'm gonna make sure my handler is aware that I'm taking my horse's temperature. I'm making sure Chesney's all right with it, that she's perky, she's happy, she's aware of my surroundings. Um, for this, I'm going to move to the back of the horse, like so. My handler is gonna let me know if anything's going wrong up at the front, right? Okay. And in order to do this, this should be a moderately swift action that so you're not poking around in a horse's hind end. I'm gonna let my horse know I'm here. I'm gonna stand off to the side in case something does go wrong. And I'm gonna stand as close to the horse as possible. So all I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my horse's tail and I'm gonna push it off to the side. As so. And I'm going to stick this in and it should beep when it's done. And something to consider is to not stick it in too far and not too far in because it could be pressing against poop. We don't want to be taking the temperature of poop. So I'm going to slowly insert the thermometer into the rectum and I'm kind of going to tilt it a little upwards towards the inside wall. And I already have a reading of 100.1 and we're going to see if the thermometer beeps. If not, a good, in, a good time would be about one to two seconds or one to two minutes for that thermometer. I'm making sure my horse is all right. She's doing pretty good. It went up another point. So I'm currently at 100.2. I'm going to leave it in just for a little bit more. That way I just get a more accurate reading. All right. I think that's our temperature for today. I'm going to slowly pull back out. Good job. Good job, Chesney. And the reading that I have is 100.2. And that does fall within the range of 99.5 to 101.5. So I'd say that her temperature is pretty normal and average um, because it falls within that range. So I'm done taking the temperature of the horse, so I'm going to move back up to the horse just to conclude. So again, the vitals we took today were the mucous membranes, which should be a pink and moist in color. Again, uh, yellow or any other color, could, yellow could indicate a liver problem, red could indicate fever or infection, a white could indicate anemia, and a blue or purplish color could indicate lack of oxygen. We also took a capillary refill time on Chesney today. That should fall within a one to two second time period. Um, when you press your thumb, it should go white, and once you release your thumb, it should return to a pink color within one to two seconds. Um, I also took a skin pinch on Chesney today. That indicates hydration levels of the horse. That should also return to a regular, uh, a regular, a regular skin pinch should return within one to two seconds. I also took a pulse rate on a horse on Chesney. That is a time or a beat per minute, 32 to 44 beats per minute. Anything out of that range would be considered abnormal. We also took a heart rate on Chesney, which should ideally match the pulse, but today it didn't. But again, it did fall into the range of 32 to 44 beats per minute, indicating good overall health. I took a respiratory read on Chesney, which fell between 18 or 8 to 16 breaths per minute, and that indicated a normal range. I listened to all four quadrants of Chesney's gut, um, all in which were active, rumbly, and 
noisy, which were a good implication of her good overall gut health. And then I also took temperature on Chesney today, which fell between the range of 99.5 to 101.5, and Chesney's temperature today was 100.2. Again, vitals are very important to the overall general health of your horse. Your horse should be perky, it should be happy, it should have an appetite, it should be interested in food and water, um, its complexion should be good, it should have an overall gleam and shiny coat, healthy coat. Um, its posture should be um, active, it shouldn't be depressing or anything of that sort. Movement should be normal. Um, and again, just, just knowing what the normals are for your horse will help give an overall general idea of what might be abnormal when that time or if it ever comes. I would like to thank my handler today for helping me out with Chesney. Thank you Chesney and I'd also like to give credit to my videographer Kayla Lancashire for videoing this video. Thank you.